The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome in to Views from the Sideline. I'm Joey Tysick. Across with me is Malik Hill. And uh, the NBA season has started. We have to talk about NBA basketball. I haven't decided if I'm excited about it yet or not. Um, but it's here. We also have a big rivalry game this weekend. Some of us are excited. Some of us are not. Um, maybe you can figure that out if you've been watching college football. And, of course, we have NFL Week 8 picks. Um, once again, things are interesting in the NFL. We had another trade this week, um, so we, we'll talk about that. Lions had a big win, um, but first, we are going to start with that rivalry game this weekend. Malik, how are you feeling about the rivalry game? I'm sad. I'm stressed. <laughs> I kind of want Michigan season to be over. I want to watch the rest of the college football season. I don't care about these dudes anymore. <laughs> These dudes. I I want the top. I want the first round picks to just opt out, mm. and I I really just want to skip to next season. I want to see if for sure on can fix this mess, because I that I don't see any fixing it this season. They played yeah. Illinois last week. Jack Tuttle threw for over two hundred yards, and it meant nothing. That's progress. It meant absolutely nothing. Yeah. They lost twenty one to seven to a a decent Illinois team. Yeah. Credit to them. Ranked their, opponent. Yeah, their 1920s uniforms, which were like how, how half terrible, about? half cool. Yeah. That's kind of how yeah. I felt about it. It, it was it was, it was, was okay. But, yeah, I, I don't feel good about Michigan. They, they, they don't know what they are. They don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. The defense is all right. Yeah. Because they've still got really good players over there. But your lack of attention to the offense in the offseason just – I, I, I don't know, man. It's it's just, it doesn't feel good. Maybe it's karma from the cheating. Yeah. I don't know. Getting what they rightfully deserve. <laughs> <laughs> Pre- preach, for, preach for all of those people, Joey. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like we keep saying, though, like, you know, how much did you want the championship? Did you want it to cost everything? I, I sent you the Thanos meme <laughs> earlier this week or last weekend. How much did it cost? Everything. everything. Like, listen, if you're okay with that, you're okay with that. I was okay with it last season <laughs> until you it, saw what this was d- going to be. Listen, that a lot of people thought they could go eight and four. They didn't yeah. think it would feel and look like this. Yeah. This is as like disgusting and just ugh, as it can get. Mm-hmm. They are like bottom 10 to 15 in every offensive category, except rushing. They're decent in rushing. Yeah. Because Khalil Mullings turned into Clark Kent. Yeah. But. I, I don't know. I don't understand how Sharon Moore, who is the offensive coordinator, just hasn't been able to come up with anything to make progress with this offense. Yeah. Like I said, Jack Tuttle passed for over 200 yards on 32 attempts. Uh, Illinois quarterback Luke, Luke Altmyer threw for 80 yards. Yeah, it was an ugly box. 80 score. yards. And they beat us by two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. because missed Missed passes. Just no, no timing, no chemistry. Right. Force everything, everything through Kalel Mullings and Colston Loveland. You threw a few screens to Samaj Morgan that got a few yards. That that was it. That. <laughs> Sorry, that's my <laughs> phone. I was but pulling yeah. up ESPN and it played in the background. Uh, I think Michigan's gonna lose to Michigan State, and I will move on to you, Joey. Ooh, I love to hear it. Um, the other thing that I was gonna bring up about Michigan that it's similar to last year. Where is Donovan Edwards? People keep thinking he's going to have some breakout season, and I mean, I stopped I, caring about him after after week two. I wished for. I don't. Two. I don't care about him at all. <laughs> but it's just like he's supposed to be the guy. I and think, now it's Khalil Mullins. You, you know what's so funny about this? 
I've heard multiple. I've had multiple friends that aren't Michigan fans mm-hmm. ask me this question, and I think ninety percent of Michigan fans feel how I feel. We just don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, Khalil Mullings is good. Donovan Edwards hasn't been good. I don't it just care. is what it is. Yeah, at like this it, point. it is what it is. I I have no answer. Yeah, like all the flash he showed, like those last three games when Blake Corum was gone in twenty twenty two, it seems like it's just not there. Yeah. He hasn't like progressed as a player. I don't know. It, but it's it's just not there. Yeah. I'm they excited. also they also use him wrong. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, you're good. They also use him improperly. Yeah. But I'm excited for this game. I bet you are. <laughs> uh Michigan State had a good win over Iowa. It's not a great win necessarily anymore because Iowa's kind of going downward. In year one, it's it's a good win. Yeah, it's still good. Thirty two to twenty. Um Aiden continues to look good. He has great chemistry with Nick Marsh at this time. Um, and they are connecting all the time. And Nick Marsh just makes electric plays. They've also found their running game through Lynch Adams. He's been the, the number one guy. Nate Carter. Yeah, has Nathan, been Nathan Carter in small doses has been pretty good in yeah. small doses. But Lynch Adams has, I think, he's also the guy that's just more electric. I love, more electric. I love guys that run hard. And yeah. He, he runs so hard. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch. He's kind of like a smaller David Montgomery, in a way. And Jerron Glover has shown signs again still that he's um, good to go. And I like the way that they're playing offense right now. Like, Aiden is not is taking shots kind of like I want, but he's not, he's not being too risky. He did throw another pick. The only thing I'll say for this game that makes me nervous, just do not challenge Will Johnson. It, I don't. It, I don't even know if he's playing. If that's he true. Plays, yeah. If he doesn't play, all bets are off. Just chuck yeah. it. Chuck it. Go for it. If he plays, yeah, he's throwing it to his side of the field. Yeah. Is, which that's is not scary. a good idea. Does he shadow at all? I know it's college; they don't shadow as much. But like, I it's hard to describe his exact technique because I'd be curious yeah. if like he would stick to Nick Marsh or st- stay near. near he him. usually stays on one side of the field. Okay. But yeah, he. He's, he's the shutdown guy. So okay. you can get him once or twice. The third time, he's going to get you. So that would be an important thing is make sure you put Nick Marsh on the opposite side of the field, put your best receiver on the other side, take shots that way. Uh, just stay away from Will Johnson. Because yeah, Jari Hill and all the other corners do a lot of grabbing and holding. So. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is this Michigan State defense still isn't that good. So if Michigan had a time – to figure out some things with their offense, this would be a time. Obviously, it's a rivalry game, so everybody's going to be amped up. It's at Michigan, so I'm still nervous about it, but I feel better about the game that Michigan State should be able to hang. Um, The only thing, like I said, that it also makes me a little bit nervous is just Michigan coming in, struggling. This could be their get-right game uh, as far as whatever they want out of their season. It could they could have been that a few weeks ago. Yeah. And now this is this is a big game for both teams because this is a swing game for making a bowl game. I think. Michigan probably has a really good chance still. But Michigan State, if they get this one, a bowl game should be basically inevitable at this point. Uh, which will be a huge success in year one with Jonathan Smith and Aiden Childs. So from that perspective, it's just exciting that Michigan State now looks like they have a chance. And I don't know if I'd put money on Michigan State, but I do feel more confident that they can get this done at this point. Just seeing the way Michigan – they haven't even announced their quarterback yet. So we don't know who's going to be behind the center in this game. You think it should be Davis Warren? I, I The only reason I say Davis Warren is because – He's not gun shy, and he has a better arm than Tuttle. Yeah, honestly, like Tuttle is a seventh year guy who doesn't have a big arm. He's more accurate than Davis Warren, mm-hmm. but he missed throws last game. Yeah, like he he just was off and gun shy. There were so many times where he would just pump fake, pump fake, keep looking, take a sack. Yeah, and like is I I would rather at this point just take the guy that's gonna let it fly mm-hmm. and live with it. Yeah, I'll live with it at this point because I'm not gonna get mad. <laughs> yeah, it can't get any I'm, worse, really. Exactly. I'll I'll take the downs at this point because hmm. there could be a few ups with Davis Warren. At least he can complete 
some like college level passes. Yeah. Do you the thought the other thing that I struggle with with Michigan is like, do you trust the pass catchers enough though? At the same time, because it just feels like everybody's been not on the same page. A lot. I think a lot of people have downed their receiving core, and there has been some good reason. I think they only have like three legit Big Ten level receivers right now: mm-hmm. Tyler Morris, Frederick Moore, and Samaj Morgan. And last game, there you would have to pay attention and like look at clips afterwards. Mm-hmm. But there were times where receivers got open, and Tuttle just didn't see them, or he would throw it and miss or throw a pick. Yeah. Like, that pick he threw straight to the middle linebacker, Tyler Morris was wide open and could have ran for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a middle route where he broke off the corner, and Tuttle just threw it to the linebacker. Like, he couldn't get it over the guy. Mm. I think Davis Warren probably could have gotten to Tyler Morris. Yeah. So, it's a mix of only having a few, like, Big Ten level guys and there being no connection Really, no chemistry between the quarterback and receivers. It, it's it's just it's tough all around. Yeah, because just really looking tough. at the stats, Colson Loveland is far and beyond their biggest receiver. Yeah, they they just basically spam him as much as they can. Yeah, he has thirty six rece- receptions for three hundred and forty four yards. That's about a third, a third of the team's receptions, and about almost half of the team's yards. Yeah, <laughs> that's wild. So, uh, yeah. And, I mean, Michigan is naturally a running team, but, I don't know, they need to get their their receiving game going a little bit, which, I mean, of course, it goes into their, their quarterback play as well. But it, it, it's, it, it, it's insane that they haven't developed any of these guys. Like, Tuttle's a seventh-year guy. He is what he is. Alex Orgy, fourth year. Mm-hmm. Davis Warren, fifth year. Jaden Denigal, a guy that I don't even think travels with the team on the road. He was a three-star guy out of California. He's in his fourth year. They don't even suit him up half the time. Yeah. I don't like what have you been doing mm-hmm. in the off seasons with these guys? Yeah. To where none of them could improve. Right. To even be competent on this level. Yeah. It is yeah. Well, it goes to the same I mean, I know you said you're not worried about it. It is what it is, but Donovan Edwards has been the backup for four years. And he probably looked his best his first two years. That that stretch he had hey, he had at the end of the season in 2022, mm-hmm. where he had like almost 600 yards and like seven touchdowns yeah. in a four-game span, that's what everybody's been holding on to. Yeah. Because he looked electric, like the five-star running back. Right. He looked like that in those four games. And at that time, people didn't know if Blake Corm was going to come back or yeah. not. So they thought, oh, we're going to be just fine with Donovan Edwards. And he's still the backup. So it's just wild. I don't know. Something with their development team is just is not working out. And I, I'm not sure. And meanwhile, Kal- Kalel Mullings, <laughs> yeah. a former linebacker, has high level development as a running back. And like it's hit, it's hit or miss with every guy at each position. Yeah. Some of them have worked out, and some of them have have been duds. Right. And it's weird. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Michigan, Michigan State this weekend. Both teams are four and three. This is a seven thirty kickoff which is awesome. So it's actually probably not even, I'm going to probably be able to sit at home and well, no, we'll, we won't be home in time. 24, 21 MSU, but uh game winning field goal by, um, what's the guys? Something Kim. Yeah. What's the Kim Jonathan name? Kim. No, <laughs> I think it's Jonathan. Yeah, it's Kim, Jonathan yeah. Kim game winning field goal by Jonathan Kim yeah. in the big house. Mm-hmm. Heartbreak brother of Michigan state legend quarterback. I can't even remember his name. Noah Kim. Noah Kim. He played. He played for Coastal this past weekend. He looked pretty decent. Yeah. They lost to Louisiana, but he played. But yeah, J- Jonathan Kim's been great. I, he set a record last week for field goals, which I don't know if that's a a great stat to hold. Uh, record field goals because that just means you're you're not scoring. But he's I mean, got it's, a, it's it's uh, great to have a reliable kicker. So yeah, that's a good thing. he kicks far too. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that would be crazy. What if we got the opposite of, you know, the the muffed kick or whatever, the blocked kick or whatever that was so many years ago? What do you <laughs> Why mean? can I not think like, of it? What if it happened for Michigan? Yeah, like, what, oh. in reverse. That'd be insane. What if Michigan won like 45 to 10? <laughs> and Davis out. Warren has like one electric game. Yeah. And it's just like the biggest fluke ever. I don't know. Davis Warren has a big game. Donovan Edwards runs for over 100. <laughs> 
All, all the prophecies yeah, come to I, life. I don't know. That'd for be, one night. That'd be wild. If they do it against MSU, I'd have a smile on my face. Let's hope. Forget it. Let's just hope for Michigan State fans, Will Johnson's out and Nick Marsh goes for 200. <laughs> there will be a lot of pass interferences yeah. on him. I'm, I'm betting that now. <laughs> Several. Probably a few on Jerron Glover, too. Probably. It might be a big tight end game, Colston Loveland and Jack Velling. That'd be funny. Okay. Uh, so, we'll see. Should be a good game. That's that's the nice thing is both teams are kind of even playing field. It's unfortunate that they're not, like, elite teams by any standard, but they're, they're, they're decent. This is like the game from the 2012 season where Michigan won, like, 13 to 9. Oh, I hope it's not I was like at that, that game. <laughs> I hope it's not like that. Yeah. I need some scoring at least. Brendan Gibbons field goal to win the game. Ugh. Good times. Um, as far as the rest of college football goes, there was some like big upsets, but I wouldn't say crazy. Georgia beating Texas pretty handedly. It was a surprise. 30 to yeah. 15. That was a surprise the way they did it, I think. Not that they necessarily won. So Texas falls, Alabama falls again, which is amazing. Alabama's out of the top 25 for the first time in, uh, oh, no, they're not. I was like, where are they? <laughs> There's no way they fell out. Uh, they lost to Tennessee, though, which is sweet. So now they're 15th. Alabama's not making the playoff, which is great. A lot of things have to happen for them for it to. They're not, yeah. they're not making the playoff. It's a 12-team playoff, Joey. Malik, they're not making it. They have two losses if they win out and win They're the SEC. not making it. Okay, Joey. If they make the SEC championship, I want to see the look on your face. It's going to be. <laughs> I want to see it. It's going to be rigged. That's why they did the 12-team uh, playoff uh, this year because uh, they okay. knew Alabama would be down. <laughs> All right. It's Conspiracy, Joey. <laughs> exactly. Alabama holds too much stake in the NCAA. <laughs> and um, so Tennessee was one of my favorites going into the season. Uh, so it was cool to see them kind of rally back because they, they had been stumbling just a little bit recently with, uh, they lost that game to Arkansas. Yeah. So that kind of a big swing, Boise state falling, unfortunately, just because they had other, a bye pe week. other people are moving up. They play UNLV this week, so it's going to be a really good match. What if Boise state makes it to the playoff and Alabama doesn't? That'd be amazing. I'd love it. Let's, let's let that happen. See, we don't need Alabama in the playoffs. Listen, we're all rooting for Ashton Genty, so, yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. Army and Navy, still going strong. All I care about is 23 through 25. That's all I care about. That is what college football is about. Army, Navy, Vanderbilt. <laughs> the uh, the bronze teams. Yes. So And do, do you know what would be the greatest thing ever? What? Vandy beat Alabama. Two weeks later, they got can't they got Texas coming to Vandy. Oh, jeez! Could you imagine <laughs> if Vandy beats Alabama and Texas? No, in one season. Jesus. Then they have it'd be the greatest. They have Texas, Auburn, South Carolina, LSU, Tennessee. Listen, they what a gauntlet. Vandy might make a bowl. Auburn sucks. Well, <laughs> Auburn yeah. is worse than Vandy. South Carolina is a toss up. Mm -hmm. That listen, but LSU have, and Tennessee to end the season. They're probably not winning those. But they can beat Auburn and they can beat South Carolina. They're going bowling, Joey. That's crazy. The development of the Commodores. Yeah. Indiana continues their undefeated streak. I don't know how, how impressed you are that they crushed Nebraska, but, but they, they did. They destroyed them. It was very impressive. They're they, might, they might win 10 games and they could win 11. And they could be in playoff contention. Indiana. Well, they have Washington this week, which would be a big one. Then they go to Ohio State. Curtis Rourke is could be out because of a finger injury. I think he's out, but their backup is decent, so they could beat Washington. Hmm. That Ohio State game is a loss. Yeah, that is, yeah, that's a. And loss. then they end the season at Purdue, or they at home against Purdue. So, yeah, Indiana looking good. Illinois, same deal. They do have to play Oregon this week. Probably a loss. That would be wild if they won. And then they have a chance to win out after that. So Illinois and Indiana. Who knows where they're going? Um, anything else you can think of from college football that was big that happened? Uh, on Max Crosby Field this past weekend, <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Central Michigan, Central Michigan yeah. blew a big lead against Eastern. Yeah, and they Eastern did. came back and won. Yeah, Eastern is five and two. Shouts out to those Eagles in Ypsilanti. Yeah, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> um, NBA basketball is back. How much do you care, Joey? Uh, I'm still. <laughs> Let, let's start with that. What is what's the feeling? To with be NBA honest, basketball being back, I'm still debating how I feel. <laughs> so I watched Minnesota and L.A. last night, and it was okay. Neither team could shoot very well. Seemed like a first game of the season kind of deal. I got to see LeBron and Bronny James make history. Oh, should we start clapping now? Just, Maybe just a golf clap. claps. Yeah. Uh, they played, Bronny played for like a minute like, and 43 seconds. I thought like it was that. like four, three or four minutes, but it was maybe just he that. played more at the end. Yeah. But I, I think it was only a couple minutes. It was a, it was a, yeah. Uh, didn't make a shot. He looked okay. He looked okay. He needs to give, get, give him the ball in the G League and just let him work all season. Yeah, he shouldn't be getting NBA minutes right now. Um, what else? The Timberwolves Dal- connected his first three. Yeah, he that looked pretty nice. good. Austin Reeves looked even better than he has, I think. Timberwolves did not look all that great. They struggled defensively. Julius Randle looks like he's still trying to figure out his spot on this team. I think he'll be fine. But I don't know. It was just meh. It was nothing exciting. And not not that I'm like expecting anything exciting. And then they were promoting the NBA tournament, which I always forget about. Because that's November twelfth. Who cares? So they they do these two two to three weeks of regular season basketball, and then they do the tournament. It's just weird. I'm not used to it. Call me an old man. I Unless don't know. the Pistons win it, I don't care. Yeah. Can so, you imagine the – okay, we'll get to the Pistons. Well, we but, can go right to it. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch the – I watched the first half of Celtics-Knicks. The Celtics, the Celtics blew out the Knicks. Yeah. Jason Tatum's jumper looked smooth again. Mm-hmm. That was nice. Mikel Mc- Bridges did not. His jumper looked like something from the 70s. <laughs> I, I don't know what was going on there. In the second half, he smoothed it out again. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't know what his problem I, is. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure yeah. either. Like he went on like a 10-0 run by himself in the third quarter. It was weird. Yeah, and I think the, the Knicks are going to be not so great. I think their their depth is going to be a big problem for them. I still think they'll be good. I think that Carl Anthony Towns trade. It, it's another example of the Knicks. Like you went all in on the Nova Knicks, mm-hmm. and what. Like creeping suspicion came up to you at the last minute. Like, we've got to make a big move. Like you, right. everybody they already, everybody made, was in on the Nova Knicks, but they already, yeah, they already made the Mikael Bridges move early, and then they decided to do the Carl Anthony yeah. Towns. And like, I think Carl Anthony Towns is good, but giving up Julius Reynal and De- Dante Divincenzo, like the thing about the Knicks was that they had depth, and I think teams are starting to realize again that depth matters in the NBA, and that's what I think why the Celtics won the championship last year. They finally, you know, didn't give up all their resources for Kyrie Irving and all that. They made little moves that were impactful. They got Kristaps Porzingis because he had been injured recently, so they got him on a pretty good deal. Um, They brought in Derek White on an easy deal, and he's turned into a great player. They got Drew Holiday, and, like, now they have Boston always does things right. Like, they've been doing it for a while. Well, they didn't, though, for, for a minute. But then they they like wrote their wrongs oh, true. basically. Yeah. Well, Danny when Danny Ainge took over, that's when things got back. Yeah, up. that's true. So I don't know. I feel like the Knicks maybe went too far one way to try to go for the chip when they were fairly close last yeah. year. And it's a long season. We'll see what happens. But. Yeah, there's a lot of development to go. But yeah, I felt better about the Nova Knicks so far. I don't know. NBA just it doesn't it doesn't excite me right now. It doesn't I, feel the same. I don't know. Is it because I'm just, getting just old? Just say it. Just say it. Is it because I'm getting old? That's a part of it. I or think is, that is a part of it. Or is it just boring? There's it. There's no excitement when you watch NBA basketball anymore. Yeah. Half the time, you don't get good basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you do, and you get excited when you see it because it seems rare. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, man, this is like, this is what I remembered it being like. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, don't, and, you don't get that And we time. talked about it, and I get it. There, there's all these advanced metrics and health stuff that's going on nowadays, but there's so many guys sitting out back-to-back games. It's already been announced. Joel Embiid said he might never play back-to-backs again. <laughs> Yikes. We never, we never even talked about that. No. 
Yeah. Kevin Gar- you got Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce like ripping him up for that. It's the job. Kawhi Leonard yeah. should just retire. He's it's, out it's indefinitely. Over. It's over. Yeah. What a what a crazy career he's had. To going from He was a top three player for two like championships four or five years. Star player. And then now he just can't stay healthy for seems like forever now. Remember when he was supposed to play in the Olympics? Yeah. Showed Did, up for camp and then left. Which just I don't know. Are the Clippers cursed? I think so. Every it, time it might be a part of it. Every time you think they're doing something good for their organization, just falls apart. It's like I think the New York Jets are probably cursed. I think the Clippers are probably cursed. Mm-hmm. There are certain franchises where things just go wrong. Yeah. So the Pistons play tonight. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about I, on them. a positive note. <laughs> Let's talk about them. So they're playing the Pist- uh, the Pacers on opening night. It's at. Detroit, which is fun. Yeah. Pistons have some light hype to them this year, I guess. There are people that believe they can hit 30. I do That's not. the hype. I am not one no, of those Nobody's people. saying playoffs. Right. People are saying competent basketball team, mm-hmm. focusing on improvement. Yeah. Unlike that bald coach from last year, not this new bald coach. <laughs> That one from last year. The one from last year, not this year. The guy that focused on the French boy. We're not going to talk about him. Yeah. Fred Vincent seems like he's already making progress with uh, Jade Mm Ivey. The rotations look like they're going to make some sense. Yeah. Tobias Harris, I think, will be a a, really consistent guy. The The chemistry should be better. If they stay healthy, they should progress. Yeah. I trust J.B. Bickerstaff with this. What if you see Wendell Moore get minutes? I'm going to not watch them as much. <laughs> Just curious. Yeah. Uh, so, we saw the Pistons do some things in the offseason. They got Malik Beasley in the rotation. Tim Hardaway Jr., as you mentioned, Tobias Harris. They drafted Ron Holland the second in the draft. He should provide some spark um, on offense for the second unit, I'm hoping. I'm still mad that they didn't draft Dalton Connect, but everybody mm-hmm. hates old. "Quote unquote old guys yeah, yeah. that are I, ready to I, play." I, he he would have, uh, yeah. Even though we signed two old guys, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Tobias Harris, but that's uh, yeah. that's besides the the fact. And um, yeah, I think I have hope for this team because I, I like that adding Malik Beasley, Tim Hardaway Jr. and Tobias gives us some more three point shooting from what we've seen in the preseason and the. Preseason always terrifies me. Jay Nivey has been shooting the ball really well, so hopefully that can continue into the regular Seeing season. Seeing him play with confidence, it just puts a smile on your face. Yeah. Cade, he just needs to stay healthy. Yeah. That's we, the we know thing. what he is. Like, he is the best player on yeah. the team. Right. And I don't. I just want to see the rookies show something. We saw Bobby Clintman in, pre, in the summer league look pretty good. Yeah. If he can also give the second unit some scoring, along with Marcus Sasser, along with Ron Holland, like their second unit might be pretty good. And if they have depth, again, I think depth helps these teams take some pressure off Cade, take some pressure off Jaden Ivey, and then you just have some veteran shooters with some younger guys to push the ball, and whatever happens, happens. But we could we could be somewhat exciting. Now, the scary part is we're going up against the Pacers on opening night, and the Pacers... Are, did they make the playoffs last year? They made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, this is why I can't talk basketball anymore. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't that terrible? Oh, because they made that weird. I love the fact that you, yes. They made that weirdo run last year. Yeah, Jalen Brunson got hurt. Yeah. The Knicks couldn't close him out. That's it why. Was, yeah. Because it, there was a lot going on. They were a really good team going into last year. They hit a, a they faltered hot, a major hot streak. Yeah, and then they reignited yeah. in the playoffs. Miles Turner was shooting like sixty percent from three. Like yes. it was, it was something else. Yes. So this team, they have some experience now, but they're still really young. Yeah. They have Tyrese Halliburton coming off his best season. A lot of people thought for at one point at the beginning of the season he could be like MVP. He's candidate. he's pretty much he's not a, quite a superstar yet, but like yeah. He's considered the franchise player for Indiana. Right. And they got Pascal Siakam still. Yeah. He played very well in the playoffs. Yeah. Miles Turner, like you said, he's been shooting the ball a lot better in the last couple years. I feel like they drafted really well. They got Johnny Furphy. 
They also got Tristan Newton in the draft. So I think those young guys can step up for them. Isaiah Jackson's still a young, good player for them. Um, oh, Ben Matherin, of course. He had a really good they, rookie they season. They have a legit like eight or nine guys they could play. Yeah. Now, I'm sure they'll stick to like seven or eight guys in the rotation, but mm-hmm. they have guys that at any point, you still got Ben, you didn't mention Ben Shepard. Yeah. Who as a rookie hit some like important yeah. threes in the playoffs. Like, right. They have guys. Andrew Nemhard, one of the biggest surprises exactly. of last year. One of the most improved guys in the league. He got a big contract this offseason, didn't he? Uh, he got an extension, extension a, a pretty yeah. good extension, yeah. So, so they've got they got players, and then they have my dog T.J. McConnell. <laughs> I love that guy. Top three backup in the league. He's maybe the best. He's great, but they have a good mix of young and a couple of veteran guys. I forgot they also have James Johnson, who's just listen menacing. He's one. Of he the, doesn't have to play. He's one of the last of the <laughs> Mohicans when it comes to enforcers. <laughs> James Johnson is an enforcer. Yeah, he is. He, he's playing basketball is not what he's there for. It's true. But I think that's a good test for the Pistons right away to play a team that is has high expectations to make the playoffs. This is a good way to just figure out right away where the Pistons are at, what they can do. And like I said, I'm not I'm not worried about the record. I don't think they're going to get the 30 wins. Some people think they can. I, I just don't see it yet. But I could see 20. 20 some and just just a six game improvement from last year that's not enough Joe but I think I think the way that they did it last year the the huge so losing streak uglier. is a part of it right what was it what was it 28 games yeah I believe so if you cut that in half yeah they want they, that means they won 14 more games like that's 28 if they don't go on an insane losing streak yeah they're close to 30. And I don't think they go on any crazy losing streaks. I think streaks like this 25 would be a good number. I think that's fine by me. An 11 game improvement sounds good, but last year was an all time failure all around. Yeah. Like when it comes to an all time failure, you you got to get close to 30 to me. You got to get close. Yeah, I can. I I understand it. I just think there's still just going to be so many weird chemistry things with this team that they got to figure out. And I'm hopeful that they could get to 30. I'm just not expecting it. If they are healthy, I think they should. Okay. But you never know when it comes to health. Yeah. But if they're fully healthy for most of the season, and K, uh, we we both assume Kate is taking a jump, right? Yeah. Do we assume Kate? I think Jaden is is the key. Do we here. assume Jaden's confidence? JB Bickerstaff is going to keep empowering him. I can't. There's not going to be a Monty Williams. <laughs> no, we're not saying he's going to shoot 40 percent from three. Yeah. But. I can't guarantee it, but I like the trend that Jaden is on right now. Yeah. So, like, just putting guys in the right place is going to help from the jump. Yeah. So, let's just look at this top to bottom. Let's look at some of the teams the Pistons could be better than. Boston, no. <laughs> Obviously, I'm we just going, out I'm the, just yeah, going yeah. through. Atlanta. No, because of, because of Trey Young. Mm hmm. Exactly. They got Trey Young. I think and, they still have yeah. some talent. Uh, they now, didn't get, I, think, I think they're like a 37, 38 win team. Yeah, they're definitely a, yeah. a down team nowadays. They're pretty average. But pretty average. I think they're still good enough. So that's kind of what we're looking for is teams are on that range. Chicago. Chicago's another weird team. I think the Pistons yeah. should be better sh- than Chicago. Yeah, they're, they they got Josh Giddy now. I don't, they're like embracing youth but also – I don't know what they're doing. It's it's weird with that one. Yeah, they they didn't really do as much as we thought they would. We'll do. be better than Washington. Yeah, cross them out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be better than Washington. I was getting there. I was it, I was just going in this order. Can I bring one team up? I think we should be on one? par with like Chicago. Can we be as? This is what I said last year. Can we be as mid as Toronto? Toronto won, won what, like 32 games last Toronto year? Toronto got Emmanuel quickly, RJ Barrett. Uh, I mean, the guys they traded for. That's, oh, I know. That's what I'm, just what I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Grady uh, Dick is back. He's probably going to be their starting two yeah. guard. Jakob Perto at the big. They That's added the big. Davion Mitchell. I think is a sneaky good move. Kelly Olynyk, Jamal Shedd. They lost Gary Trent. He's in Milwaukee now. Jacoby Walter. It's like, get, yeah. Toronto was so yeah. mid last year. We should be on the level of Toronto and Chicago, that, I think. Exact that is that's 30, Joey. We should be better than that's Washington, 30. better than Charlotte. 
So the the thing with Charlotte is they have they have a it. all they have a high level all star and Brandon Miller is becoming yeah, Charlotte's, a star. Charlotte's going to so be probably on the same. Us and Charlotte could be on the same level. They also have Miles Bridges back another year. We should be on the same level as Toronto. Yeah. And they're just over 30 wins. We should be in that Charlotte, Toronto, Chicago yes. range. Which is just that's above. Right, that's outside the play. Right just outside above the, play the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Like fighting for the 10th seed, but not there yet. Yeah. That's where Detroit should be. Because, <sighs> like. See, now that we, now that we, like, even it out, 30 makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. I guess. Yes. Yeah. I guess. We just better be better than Brooklyn and Washington. See, Brooklyn is a <laughs> tricky one. See, this is Brooklyn the problem. Is a tricky one. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm I'm hopeful for the team. We'll see after tonight. We should be as good as Brooklyn. Obviously we can't make a, a one game scenario, but I'll yeah. I'm just curious. Nobody should be worse than the Wizards. That's yeah. <laughs> Unless like Alex Sar just and look, Alex Sar and Zach Reiser look d- pretty decent in the preseason. So yeah, not Washington terrible. Let's see, like what other moves did Washington make? They got Jonas Valanciunas, which is a that's a that was the, move. one of the weirdest moves of the off season to me. I don't know why he signed with Washington. I don't either, but I I mean I think it's good for them. They also got Malcolm Brogdon. So like, <laughs> I hate to say like the the Wizards might be okay. Uh, is their coach still Wes Unsell Jr.? Uh, probably. <laughs> then no. They got Malcolm Brogdon, Sadiq Bay, like our guy Corey Kispert, Bob Carrington, your favorite player Johnny Davis, <laughs> Palau Koulibaly. Well, Johnny Davis ain't playing. I'll repeat, your favorite player Johnny Davis. He's, he's not playing. <laughs> he's your favorite player. Corey Kispert, Kyle Kuzma, Jordan Poole, the Pool Party, <laughs> Valanciunas, Alex. Sa- like they might be okay. They have enough players to be okay, but we know what isn't, this is gonna happen. <laughs> isn't that wild? These are the Wizards we're talking about. But this is the problem with the East Eastern Conference in general. Everything after like the top six is <laughs> mid. So it's like you'd hope the so, Pistons. Yeah. You'd hope the Pistons are better than these teams, but all these teams have some guys that are. You know, decent enough that if they have a good season, you never know what's going to happen. Shouts out for Orlando being the team that made it out. Yeah, they did. They just gave Jalen Suggs five years, 150. That's insane. But shouts out to Orlando for making it out from the gutter. Yeah. Basically, I mean, Paolo totally did that for them. And they added K- KCP this year, which I think is a, yes, a good move for them. Pretty decent. Uh, they got a lot of guards, but yeah. Any other storylines that you could think of? I'm excited to see... Um, I'm always excited here we, for the. Here we go for getting names. Reed Shepard. Yes, that's how, what I'm excited how did you about. know? <laughs> because that's who I'm excited yes. about. Alperin Shingun is my favorite young big. I'm excited to see Reed Shepard. Sucks he's on the Rockets. Exactly. I I I'm not rooting for Jalen Green, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, their young core and Ma Udoka is a really good coach. Yeah. So I'm interested in watching them. Isaiah Hartenstein is out for a little bit. <laughs> I was just about to say the OKC we're Thunder. On, we're on the same wavelength. He's out for a little bit, so that sucks, but. They got the Caruso. Exactly. So you, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, I did a fantasy basketball draft with Chris um, on Monday, and I drafted Alex Caruso and Reed Shepard. Nice. So we're on the same page nice. here. Um, uh, the Edie J- John Morant pick and roll. Zach Zach Edie, another draft pick of mine in the fantasy draft. Oh, you you were just going crazy <laughs> in the ready fantasy for it. draft. Just ready for it. Big brain Joey. So. Yeah, those are teams that I'm excited about. I love yeah. seeing what the new rookies can do, so that's always something that's interesting to me. Give me one sentence on your thoughts on the Pelicans preseason. One sentence. Uh, try not to get too hyped. Okay. I okay. like the DeJounte Murray move. Bearded Zion. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> it it's interesting. It's just... It's just he his, still kind of looks like a kid in the face, but yeah. he doesn't And his stature is so odd that it just it's a blend of so many different yeah. things. That that playoff game where he got hurt was really depressing because it yeah. was his, it was his breakout game. He was, he was looking dominating. really good. Yeah, they brought you know Brandon Ingram is back, which I think is a big surprise. Trey Murphy, he, he was the one that just signed a, an extension. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he was lights out last year from three. Get let him shoot at least. Seven or eight threes a game, yeah. at least. Jordan Hawkins, another year. I think he's going to keep improving. It's weird that 
Figuring out their rotation is going to be something else. I think <laughs> it's it's going to be. Are, are they starting to eve Missy at at center? I think the, as the rookie, I, they might be. Yeah. Well, I think they're probably going to start Daniel Tice. To be honest, I forgot they signed Daniel Tice. Yeah, but. that's like the downfall. Losing Valanciunas for Daniel Tice is rough. They're just going to be running and shooting. <laughs> But Basically. they, I mean, they they have the the potential to play like small ball, where they could they could do something weird with Zion, Zion would basically be the center, <laughs> right? Zion basically playing the yeah. Draymond Green, Dan- Daniel Tice at the four. No, they could play like Brandon Ingram or, at the four. Trey Murphy's six eight. Herb oh, Jones. so just don't. Oh wow, just like, don't they start could do Daniel something Tice. Wild. That'd be so, that'd be insane. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna do it, but like, like that's a lineup that, that they lineup, could yeah. they could rotate. Zion and Herb Jones at the four and five. They could rotate into that. Like Daniel Tice mm. is still your starter, yeah. But I think that's something interesting. They kept Jose Alvarado, so like they still have their core. I think the weird part is where is CJ McCollum fitting into this team? He's still the start. I think in that starting lineup, I think he goes back to kind of what his role was in Portland. Yeah, I don't think he has to be a playmaker anymore. Right, just like run around, hit open jumpers, get hot, do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. No. No extra pressure to like get those assists and stuff. Yeah. I just hope that Dejounte Murray is able to work his way back to a not prototypical, but somewhat of an older school point guard, so similar to how he was with San Antonio, more of a facilitator that still can get to the basket and get you. Some he was buckets. one of the best closers in the league last year. Honestly. Yeah. He closed out a lot of games for. Atlanta. I just felt like for Atlanta having Trey Young, him having to play off ball was just a little bit too awkward for him. Yeah. So it's also nice that it's going to put CJ McCollum back off the ball as well. So that might end up working out, but there are some question marks with it. But I mean, you know me, I'm excited about the Pelicans. <laughs> They've kept their core together. I didn't think that was going to happen. So I think it's interesting. I still think they should have traded Brandon Ingram and just started Trey Murphy, but yeah, I think there was, yeah. there was an idea for that and something could have worked out, but I don't know. I want to get your thoughts on the, uh, the Splash Brothers. Where do you see Golden State without Klay Thompson, and how do you see Dallas with Klay Thompson? I think Golden State. I I don't. I still think there's a chance they could. They'll probably be a playing team, mm-hmm. but d- with if Steph is healthy, you can't count them out. Exactly, and I I think but like Kyle Anderson took the hitch out of his jumper yeah. as soon as he joined the Warriors. Like he just like a like a smooth old jumper. It looks nice. Buddy Heald was hot in preseason. I don't know how they they do this like, every year <laughs> when they lose people. They just yeah. bring people they in. They bring in more shooters. They brought in DeAnthony Melton, who I think is a solid backup. Yeah. Like, they just now, find guys. I, I think the key for them, well, uh, I'll say the B thing is Kuminga. What does he become now? Because they, they, they're they putting so much into him becoming yeah. probably the second best guy. But what are you getting from Draymond at this point? Is he is he 90% headache? Yeah. Or is he still going to be a high level playmaker and like defender? I think what they're is he? I think their biggest question mark can Andrew Wiggins go back to Andrew I'm Wiggins? To be honest, I kind of forgot he existed. Exactly. <laughs> I forgot about him. He yeah. fell off the map last year whereas 2 years ago he was kind of carrying them. He was the damn near the best player in the finals. Yeah. Yeah. And so Second best because Steph was balling, but, right? Yeah. But if he can get back on track, like I think Steph and Andrew Wiggins can take this team as far as they want. And then, like you said, you have supplemental pieces like Buddy Heald and things like that that it might work. Yeah, but Dallas wise, I think they really just they want Clay to go back to like what he was mm-hmm. in the beginning, like the shot chucker, the the inefficient shot chucker that he's become in the last few seasons. They're gonna to want to tamper that down. Mm-hmm. Kyrie is the ball. Hand, Kyrie and Luca handle the ball. They make decisions. They do most of the scoring. Clay, get to your spots and shoot. Yeah, like we we don't need you to shoot eleven threes, and just take super difficult shots. Hit your comfortable shots. Mm-hmm. Get to your spots and just let it fly. Yeah, don't think, just shoot. That's what it is with Clay, mm-hmm. and try to play some better defense because yeah, his decline defensively has been sad. Yeah, that's it's the worst thing because I th- I think that was what made Clay himself is just being one of the best two way players. Yeah, he was he, everybody like talked about three and D players. Yeah, he was the best, maybe the best there ever is. 
or right. was when it comes to a three and D player. Yeah, at least all time shooter and a elite defender at at his peak. Right. Hmm. Any other storylines you can think of? I mean, I know there's some, and we'll get to them more as the season goes if along. If Cleveland can't win a playoff series this year, I think they might need to Re- do restart. some things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you you got some like good pieces and some young players, but yeah, you either need to add something else or just shift around some parts. Yeah. Because I like what they have, but I don't see anything special. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, if you can't win one this year, you lost to Orlando in their like first returning year to the playoffs. Yeah, actually, did they they beat? Did they beat Orlando? I can't remember. Mm. I see. <laughs> yeah, I, we're I both terrible at this. They they ended up losing. They I think they lost to the Knicks in the second round. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I think that's right. I, I I'm interested in seeing what the Cavs are. Because I like what they are, but I I don't love them. I think another team similar to that, the Kings. Hey, they I went for it. I liked the DeRozan move, but if it doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. like, and they're already what do you do? They're already talking about De'Aaron Fox trades and things like I, that. I haven't seen anything about this, I, like news wise. Yeah, I haven't really. I've, either, I've seen but the, there's, I've seen the Kings might make a big move, but right. I didn't see De'Aaron included. There's in rumblings and stuff because I don't know. So, I don't know. The Kings are kind of on that edge of if this doesn't work out with DeMar, where do they go from there? Do you sw- try to swap Tyrese Halliburton back? <laughs> Bring him back to Sacramento. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That'd be rough. So, yeah, the NBA season, I, I'm fairly optimistic, but it's kind of a wait and see. If Again, if the rookies get going, that usually makes makes me more excited. And obviously, if the Pistons are doing well, We'll be more excited about the NBA season. But after one night, eh, I'll watch the games tonight as well to see what, what happens. I didn't even see who's on. You talked about it earlier. The Bucks and the Sixers and... And then Suns and Clippers. Suns and Clippers. 10. Yeah. Eh. Won't be awake. I'm not excited. tomorrow. I'm not really excited about either of those matchups, but it is what it is. All right, moving on to the NFL. We had a... Decent trade. This would have been bigger, of course, a couple years ago. But DeAndre Hopkins traded to the Kansas City Chiefs for, I believe, a fourth round pick from Tennessee. And it might even be conditional. So I don't know if it makes Kansas City all that much better. DeAndre Hopkins is it should help their passing offense some. Yeah. They're he's six not, and no and they don't have much of a passing. He's offense. not what he used to be, but he's he's still got a little bit of juice left. So it'll be interesting. Um, How much time do we have left? Not very much. <laughs> As well as, yeah, we so we got to fly through picks, yeah. and we'll talk about the Lions for a minute since they're big win. So Thursday night football actually could be a good one. We got Minnesota at the Rams. Rams are getting Cooper Cup back, so maybe their offense does, does a little better. But the Vikings coming off a loss to the Lions may want to put it to the Rams. I'm taking Minnesota. Me too. The Rams, mm-hmm. their defense is just horrendous. Tennessee at Detroit. Lions had a big, a big win. Mason Rudolph fan. No, <laughs> no. Okay, he's kind of odd. If you know Listen, what I mean. If he's odd, then what is Will Levis? <laughs> the Mayo Man. <laughs> <laughs> that just that's that's the explanation. That's the definition of odd, right there. Yeah. And Tennessee, like we said, they just traded DeAndre Hopkins. Calvin Ridley either drops a pass or the quarterback can't get it to him. It's ugly. Their best player is Tony Pollard, and the Lions are really good at stopping the run. I think it's easy going with Detroit, but how gritty are those gritty ty- gritty Lions that uh, they were able to pull off that victory against Minnesota yeah, last that, weekend? That was, the offense had to be close to perfect, and they were. They left it to Jake Bates. I was surprised they weren't more aggressive. Yeah, They just set it up for Jake, but he hit it. Mm-hmm. It was a really good win. They got a trade for somebody. Yeah, because there was no. I think what did they rush. say? And Sam, they they blitzed like thirty percent more. Yeah. and they still couldn't get home. Sam Darnold's time to throw was like three seconds. Yeah, which is not good. So yeah, they need to look so, yeah, at the, somebody. The run for Crosby needs to start now. Trade yeah. what you can. And it's funny because he's been going on like Twitter and stuff saying that <laughs> every time he opens his DMs are just something about home <laughs> loaded with the Lions fans, yeah. which is cool. Um, but I'm not sure where we're at with that. Again, I would at least like us to go after a guy like Zadarius Smith from the Browns. He sounds like the most possible. But if we got Miles Garrett or Mac, Max Crosby, I'd 
be over the moon. So, yeah, the Lions now lead the NFC North, which is great. Jamison Williams, not officially, but is possibly in line to get a suspension for whatever he did. Two games of illegal substance. Luckily, they're playing the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> so, it shouldn't matter. Um, he only had one catch last week for negative four yards anyways. The Lions, their offense is just cooking right now. This is just a game. Just make sure you're still, you're not taking anything easy. Just blow out the Titans and move on to next week. Um, Philadelphia at Cincinnati. Both these teams trying to kind of get back into their groove. Philadelphia, now that they're healthy, Cincinnati, after they started really slow, have won some games, even though they haven't really played anybody big time. But they're looking better. I think I'm going to go with Philadelphia in this game just because I, I think Cincinnati's defense just is not good enough. I think Cincinnati's defense isn't very good. But I think Philly's team overall, I think they're still in a weird spot even last after last week. Like, the Giants are just terrible. Yeah. And they're so talented that it didn't matter. Like, I think Jalen Hurts and Sirianni are, are still in a weird spot. Mm-hmm. The passing offense is decent. Nothing special, and Jalen Hurts could still make some mistakes. I can see Joe Burrow out playing him. I'll go Cincy. Okay. Baltimore at Cleveland. Looks like we're getting Jameis. Well, they they played Dorian Thompson Robinson last week. Yeah, but he's hurt. Oh, he got okay. hurt in that game. It's finally time. So it looks like it's going to be Jameis because um, it it the only reason that I say that it looks like DTR is going to be out. Is because they signed Bailey Zabby. Yeah, I saw that. So, I think it might be Jameis time. So, you're taking the Browns is what you're saying. No, as much <laughs> as I would like to, I can't do it against Baltimore of all teams. Uh, they Balt- looked amazing against They've the just Bucks. looked so good. Yeah. Even in a game where Derrick Henry was struggling, all of a sudden Lamar he breaks Jackson for 80 great. yards, yeah. and then he finishes the game with like 130-some. Mm-hmm. So, Baltimore is just cooking right now. Yeah. Arizona at Miami. This is the return of Tua. I'll go Arizona. Okay. I think this yeah. is close enough. I will go, go with, with the Cardinals. I'll go with Miami. Oh, I should, before we started talking, I should have said the picks at the moment, I have 60, you have 58. Okay. I had nine correct last week. You had seven. I did miss a game, uh, so that's my fault, but it was uh, Philadelphia at the Giants, hmm. so I don't think that mattered. <laughs> Um, unless you wanted to take Daniel Jones. So, yeah, still close, but I took a little tiny lead. Anyway, Jets at New England. You're going with your boy, right? The Drake May experience will continue. The team isn't very good. No. Like, they they gave Jacksonville some life, (laughs) and that's unfortunate. But Drake May still had a good game. Mm -hmm. He played well, and And the Jets are an absolute mess. And I just, I, I hope. The Patriots beat them. There might be a chance. The Jets I, are probably going to win. I haven't looked at it, but Sauce Gardner got hurt in the Pittsburgh game on Sunday night. He hasn't even been that great this season. So, if he doesn't play, I don't know if it matters because New England's best pass catchers are their tight end and Demario Douglas, who's more of like a slot receiver. So, it, doesn't, it might not matter. But I'm going to go with the Jets just because I do think this is a, a swing game. But I would love for New England to beat the Jets. I love when the Jets fall apart. It's just, I don't know. It's kind of funny, especially after making the Devontae Adams trade. Atlanta at Tampa Bay. Jalen McMillan is Tampa Bay's number one wide receiver. Chris Godwin is out for the season after he dislocated his ankle. And Mike Evans is about, they said it might be like week 12 that he comes back from a hamstring injury. That is tough, man. So Tampa Bay, after starting the season really hot, now are in trouble. And they're playing Atlanta. It's at home. Atlanta's been okay. But I think it's just too hard in your first game without your main receivers. I'm going with Atlanta. Me too. Green Bay at Jacksonville. Do you believe in Trevor Lawrence? Does anybody believe in the Jaguars? Green Bay. I want to so bad, but I just can't. I can't see it. Indianapolis at Houston. Houston. (laughs) I'm going Houston as well. If Joe Flacco was playing, I might have picked Colts, but I just I can't. 
New Orleans at the Chargers. That's another ugly one. There's a lot of ugly games. Chargers at home. I'll go Chargers. LA, so it doesn't matter. I'll go Chargers. Um, you know what? I'll give you one. I'm going to go with New Orleans. Chris Olave is supposed to be back. Maybe Spencer Rattler figures it out. Maybe Taysom Hill's healthy. And New Orleans just randomly wins. You'll give me one, huh? Randomly wins. You sound really confident, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> You'll give me one. Well, you know, every, I, I, every I see, once in I a see while, where we, are. we take one of those swing picks. Oh, okay. Uh, Buffalo at Seattle. Seattle might be without DK Metcalf. Amari Cooper caught a touchdown pass. Josh Allen has not thrown a pick this season. And now maybe I just jinxed it, but. I did not know he had. He has not thrown a pick this year. He is one in QBR. Yeah. Wow. He's playing really good. I'm going with Buffalo. Crazy. I just think Seattle's defense has just not been very. I'm going Buffalo too. Okay. Carolina at Denver. Fun one, Uh, right? Denver is four and three. I'll go with the Bo Nix experience this week. I guess. I believe if the playoffs started today, Denver. And Indianapolis would be in the playoffs. How wild is that? I'm happy the season isn't ending right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy about that. You said Denver then? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. I feel like there's a chance Denver could slip up again. But uh, I'm going to take Carolina. Why not? Andy Dalton coming off of his car accident. I believe this morning. I believe he's okay. His family's okay, which is good. Maybe that'll give him some fire. And uh, he'll take down Denver. I don't know. Kansas City at Vegas. Yeah, we're taking Kansas City. Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. Las Vegas no is a nightmare. And Kansas City is 6-0, and so what are we going to do? Chicago at Washington. Looks like Washington, unfortunately, going to be without Jaden Daniels. Marcus Mariota played pretty well in that second half, but it was against... But- yeah, Panthers. and we've seen Marcus Mariota do that in the past and then just go back to a pumpkin. So, I don't know what the Bears – I still don't know what they are. But they've it's Marcus Mariota. They've been Mariotta. pretty good. Washington's defense is bad. <sighs> I'll go with Chicago. Okay. I don't want to. I'll go with Washington. I hope you win. <laughs> I, I do too do. for the NFC North. Uh, Sunday night football is Dallas at San Francisco. This is another ugly game. 49ers are a mess, but the Cowboys suck, so I'm going with the 49ers. <laughs> wow. The 49ers might be without – well, it sounds like Debo is going to play at this point. But they might be – they're going to be without Brandon Ayuk. There's a chance George Kittle could miss. Christian McCaffrey's still out. Hmm. It's wild. But I, Yeah, the Cowboys offense is CD or, or nothing, basically. Yeah. Um, I don't want either of these teams to win. That's how I feel. Dallas or San Francisco. Because I love seeing Dallas fall, but I like San Francisco getting some comeuppance after being so cocky. I'll go Dallas. Maybe they come out of their bye ready to go. And then your fantastic Monday night football game, Daniel Jones taking on Russell Wilson. Hey. Giants at Pittsburgh. Steelers scored, I think, like over 35 for the first time since the Big Ben era. Uh, Yeah, it's been a long time. With Dangerous at quarterback. He, he threw the ball pretty nice. How lucky are Pittsburgh fans, man? I don't know. That's... Even with that other quarterback last year, they still mm-hmm. won games. And yeah. they, they just they just figure out how to win. And they they had a rough start, but their offense took off. Yeah. It was pretty good against the Jets. And if Pittsburgh offense starts to do good, their defense is already holding There is down. no way in hell the Giants win this game. No way. I'm gonna pick Pittsburgh as well, but man, this, this might be. be funny. A Drew, I, I wish this was a Drew, uh, uh, Tommy DeVito game. I would. They need to just start playing him. I'll be honest. I would love if Russ comes out and throws like three picks in this game, and just gets <laughs> annihilated wish, wish by on the a Giants. Man's downfall. Praying on his downfall. It's just, just such a goofball. It's evil I Joey. I can't. But praying he throws three picks and gets smashed. I mean, it's just it'd be funny. You could just you could have said I'd rather see Justin Fields. <laughs> you could have put a positive spin on it. I would just rather de- see Justin. I, was, you just destroyed his whole life. I don't think I destroyed his life. I think he's just fine. I hope he gets a career in the country. I didn't say that. <laughs> Play Tommy Cutlets. Let's stop this. Oh, jeez. Anyway. Steelers win. That's our week eight picks. The other thing that I was thinking about with Kansas City and Las Vegas, Vegas just signed Desmond Ritter because Aiden O'Connell is going to be out for a while. 
Gardner Minshew is going to start, but Desmond Ritter is your backup. Vegas fans, just watch that young tight end and look forward to the quarterback you're getting next season. Yeah. This won't last hopefully, too much longer. Hopefully you can get the number one pick because they're going to need it. Yeah. All right. That's week eight picks. That is our show. Next week we'll get to do – well, actually, we're going to do two weeks. We're going to start changing it up, do every two weeks. We'll give some reviews on NBA. We'll continue doing picks. Um, so we'll give updates every once in a while. And, uh, yeah, we'll have to update on the Michigan-Michigan State game. And Malik might need a week off because of that anyway, so it'll be perfect. Other than that, this is my views from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. This is 30 wins, baby.